uh, that first spring when we took the field, and I was looking at, uh, you know, lining up and playing some of the people that uh, – well, a couple of those teams that we played in both seasons, like a North a North Greenville and, and Newberry. Um, well you know, I could I could see – right, well established, but I could see us – from the spring to the fall, we were we were much different. Yeah. I mean, we we had grown some, and and I were this was last year, and you said it. That spring game was awesome, by the way, so to awesome. be out there on that yeah. on the on the soccer field there, and just to be on the campus, yeah. it was kind of neat. But just the fact that you and I were able to walk around out there and just talk it was right. kind of like. That was being big cool. time, you know. <laughs> but I mean, but and the ESPN I, yeah. cameras following, <laughs> following and us all around. That, it was, yeah. that was awesome. So, uh, <laughs> but but we, that was our first spring, right? Where our kids were in the weight room four days a week, yeah. and and so when you go in there and look at our boards in the weight room, it's like, yeah, that's is that impressive? <laughs> and I'm thinking, considering what these kids have done or haven't had access to, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. So, I mean, we got a long way to go. I noticed. Um, I noticed. In, but I mean, in, 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 during the spring game, I, I mentioned this. I noticed some dudes, like some wide bodies. Some, yeah, they're getting some bigger. Thick guys out there that bigger. we didn't see in the spring of of twenty one or, or whenever it was. <laughs> no, it seems like a, a, a millennium. No. Ago and it's now. it's not like we're going out and getting those guys. I mean, those kids are kids that, for the most part, have. Have, for the most part, have, are growing up in the program. Right, right, right. You know, and Coach Harrell's doing a, a really good job in the weight program. But you have to get them in the weight room where the weight room doesn't work. You yeah. Know? So yeah. We, last spring, having that ability to do that was huge. And, uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to completing will be our second full year, even though we've been, we've been in a thing now, an entity now. I mean, come, come November, when this season's over, I, I will literally, when we finish the 12th, I would have been hired like the next week. So I, it'll, 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 I'll be starting my fifth year. Right. I was about to say, 2018 is when the groundwork started, Correct. and there wasn't even a, uh, it wasn't even a class recruit. There wasn't a anything. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I, I didn't have an office. I was, I didn't have an office. We didn't have, we didn't have a building. I was trying to figure out which way to tilt the building. Which, <laughs> way, you know, we're gonna put the building here, I think. But we, you know, how, yeah. do, how should we face it and whatever. So. Man. It's a. Uh, it's hard to believe that you know, almost five years in now, and 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 you're in, you know, and I know COVID threw a big a big wrench in in a lot of uh, you know what the plans were, but uh, uh, survive and overcome, right? And yeah, and it, I think, and that, to, you know, be honest with you, that's kind of what our deal is. Yeah, I mean, I think our kids are really resilient. The kids that have been in the program, the Carter Vest and the, and the Rashad Luckies, and the kids that are, th I mean, those kids are are are. They're special. Yeah. I mean, because they took a chance coming here anyway, mm -hmm. and uh, so you know, I, I absolutely you know tip my hat to those guys. I'm, I'm we're blessed to have them in the program, and I'm just you know it's it's going to be tough when they're when they're gone, you yeah. know, because this will be our kind of our graduating class this year. Yeah. We'll be losing kids this year, and and I mean we lost kids last year, but they were transfers. Right. They weren't the four year kids. They mm -hmm. were three year kids. These kids are four year kids. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tough. It's your first full recruiting class. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Uh, and I'm the only one through. left from <laughs> <laughs> from the original. <laughs> I'm the holdover. <laughs> so. uh, in looking at the roster today again, uh, a lot of kids from South Carolina. But on the flip side of that, uh, you got a kid from New Orleans. Yeah. Got kids from Florida. Georgia, Tampa. North Carolina, Tennessee. Yeah. There's a kid from Los Angeles. Yes, that's on the uh, yes, that's on the roster. So yes, the uh, the brand, the footprint. I think is people are taking notice. It's growing, and um, I mean, who knows? Who well, knows how far and, it could go. And the marketing people have done a great job. You know, you've done a great job. I mean, you can pull up on YouTube TV and and, and get Erskine football. I mean, there's there's just a lot of of We've had a lot of exposure, I think, yeah. and our coaches understand that, you know, we have to recruit a certain academic kid out of yeah. South Carolina, but at some point, you run out of those kids. <laughs> right. You know, it, because as much as I want the really good academic kid, I'd like him still be able to play football <laughs> as well. So, I mean, you know, I'd, I'd like to be able to. We want the smartest, meanest kid yeah, to play in your, you know, in your school. <laughs> so, you know, we want some guys that, you know, can also play and uh so sometimes we're going to have to kind of cast our net a little wider. But obviously you know, our home ground is here in South Carolina, and, and, and the lion's share of our program is South Carolina, and it will always be. Yeah. It yeah. will always be. But we do need to cast a net because we do need to continue to try and find the best scholar athletes. Right. You know, 
we want to coach kids that can 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 think on their feet. Mm-hmm. And you know, sometimes at some point you got to go where you got to go to get those kids. I mean, yeah, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. This is this is kind of like uh, recruiting at Duke. You know, I do think that our standard is at, at a different level than, than a lot of folks that we're going to play. Right. Um, but I'm okay with that. I yeah. mean, I've been at those schools. I've coached at those schools. I played at one of those schools. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't have any problem with that. I mean, as a coach, we love rec- we love coaching smart kids. Right. I mean, it, <laughs> that's no skin off our back at all. I mean, you know, it's nice to be able to tell a kid one time and he, and he does it, you know. Yeah. Or, so I, I do think that uh, – and, and we do have some sharp kids. And uh, so uh, – but I think that we will continue to trend in that direction. In in, uh, in another homework uh, revelation of mine, I noticed today, and uh, I was talking to my uh, color commentary partner, Mr. Bobby Hamby. He'll be uh, calling all the all the Erskine games with us here this year. Um, I noticed your linemen, okay, in, in th- that are juniors, redshirt juniors, are – Smaller than your freshman. Your fre- this is a big oh, freshman no. class. I think you guys, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, really went after. Hey, I need the six six three twenty kid. That's that's who we need to bring in. Well, and, and, it, and, and it looks like the freshman class is lining up that way. Yeah, the um, it, it, we knew we needed to get longer, um, and bigger, really across the board. Yeah. I mean, after the first spring. We had a chance to play North Greenville, had a chance to play uh, Newberry, um, played Shorter. So he played two Gulf South schools and played – I'm trying to think if we played anybody else in the sack. I can't remember who else we played. That, that feels like it was 20 years ago. It does. But it I really can't, does. So, but just in playing those few teams that we played, when we're looking at the size, it's like – we look like yeah. a junior high team playing some of these folks. So yeah. we knew we had to get bigger. The trick is how do you get bigger and, and, and still do what you things you want to do. I mean, mm-hmm. how do you get bigger and not just be a big, stiff kid that can't move and can't do those things? So, right. um, I, you know, I think we're, we're, we're succeeding. And, but that's, that's a trend that, you know, we, we're in all of our different positions. We're trying to get longer. Yeah. Um, you know, which we're, start, we're, we're starting to look more like a college football team as opposed to, but we'll, you know, maybe – Maybe not quite there that first year, that first season. The eye test, it's evident. I mean, eye test is certainly improving. Yeah, it, now, you can you can look and you can just you can tell right off, especially those that have followed since your your inaugural season, which I guess would have been the spring of twenty, right? It's the first time you really played, right? Spring of twenty one. Twenty one. Okay. And then the, then that, played that, in the that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Spring and fall of twenty one. Again, it seems like twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, the eye test. Just watching that first team in the spring of twenty one, versus who you're putting on the field right now. It is. It's night and day. Yeah, we're evolving, but again, ultimately, when it gets right down to it, 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 it doesn't come back to how good you look. <laughs> no, well, yeah, <laughs> it comes back to how good you play. I and, mean, I've, and I've been some places where they look like Tarzan and played like Jane. So, <laughs> you know, the looks can be deceiving. So, anyway, you know, let's talk about the makeup of this team a little bit. Uh, our last uh, segment will really focus in on uh, University of uh, Fort Lauderdale, which is coming into J.W. Babb Stadium this coming Saturday, one o'clock kickoff. It's faculty and staff uh, appreciation day, and uh, tickets are available and parking passes, erskinsports.com. That is this Saturday, 1 o'clock kickoff. So let's talk about the makeup of, uh, of this team. I'd rather talk about the people that you have rather than the people that you don't. But in looking at the numbers from last year, uh, a lot of wide receivers are gone. And uh, but uh, on the flip side of that, you return a good bit of running backs, and you got uh, some uh, quarterbacks returning as well. Yeah, I mean, when you're looking at the wide receivers, a couple – well, actually, there was really one that's gone. And then you had a couple others that were – really, they weren't statistical right. anything mm-hmm. on there. You had another kid that was an upperclassman that was a senior mm-hmm. that had come over from basketball, Bellamy. Yep. And, uh, you know, he, his time was up. Mm-hmm. So, um, ultimately, you know, you had the one kid leave that, that ended up at uh, out, out west at – one of those highly, highly whatever you want to call them, <laughs> yeah. highly publicized Division One programs, whatever it is, and uh, you know, but no, you know, Seneca's out at UNLV, That's and uh, yeah. um, you know, he he was a, I mean, 
I mean, I don't know if he was 80% of our offense, but he was a lot of it. Well, he had 1,100 yards. And to be honest with you, yeah. you know, it, it's kind of nice to see him not here in that respect, not because he's not a good player, but because it, it, we ended up having to be so one-dimensional because mm-hmm. that's kind of what we had. Yeah. So it's kind of forcing us to kind of evolve, right? which I think we're doing. Yeah. And uh, I think being able to spread the ball around a little bit more it makes you more than one one dimensional. I think last year we got one dimensional more or less, and uh, so yeah, some of those kids are gone, and uh, or at least you know the, the the one that really kind of mattered a little bit, and um, but I do think we have multiple players stepping up in, in that role, and and to me that's better. Good, you know, it's better to have five receivers as opposed to having one really 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 good one. Right. Um. You know, most teams can kind of maybe figure out a way to contain one. Mm-hmm. It's a little harder to contain five of them. So, you know, we, we've got a, quite a few kids that are, I think, trying to step up and, and fill that void. And uh, I think they're uh, they're doing a good job. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it evolves. I think one of the most uh, incredible catches that we saw last year came from Jamar Moore. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately, um, you know, he's still with us, but academically okay. he's uh, – He's working on yeah. on that so he can rejoin us. Um, but uh, he's able to practice with us right now. Um, and he's going to, you know, we'll, we'll look forward to getting him back for next year. But, you know, uh, this is kind of a side note thing, but it just happened the other day when uh, Florida A&M played uh, uh, North Carolina and, and Florida A&M didn't have a compliance. Uh, they didn't have a, they don't have a compliance office. How that happens, I'm not real sure. But there were 25 but, ineligible kids that didn't get to play at an fcs school i don't know how that happened i don't either and, and but there were 25 of them that were not eligible to play and they went very short-handed and ended up you know playing well but you know it's still you know north carolina uh, beat them up pretty good but uh that's very important that's a huge part of of, of what what you guys do is is keeping the kids uh eligible and and, and following the compliance rules right correct and and for the most part most of the kids do it but you know it it doesn't matter how hard you do it or how hard you work at it there's always one there's always two there's always a couple that right um i mean you can lead a horse to water you can't make it drink right and uh you know so and 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 these kids aren't it's not like they're not capable it's just they get sidetracked and or things happen and some of them have like legitimate reasons like back home yeah you you, i mean and you probably even have an idea, but some of these kids just got a lot of stuff they're dealing with that's that isn't has nothing to do with school and nothing to do with football. Right. You know, they're dealing with things with family and stuff like that, and it weighs on them, and and it affects their academics to a certain degree, and mm-hmm. and you know, some of them have handle it better than others, I guess. Uh, defensive side of the ball, uh, you got some. You, you got two uh, really good D linemen coming back uh, this year. Jordan Stenhouse will be back. Uh, Marcellus Livingston, uh, mm-hmm. both those guys there. Um, we saw uh, Joshua Komodo kind of emerge last year. He, he should, did. He should be a uh, returning uh, guy, right? He did. And, and I'll, I'll throw one more name at you, but you have to go back to your the first spring, Malik Samuel. Okay. Yeah. Malik Samuel was defensive end. That was number nine back mm-hmm. in the spring. Was was pretty solid, and he's back with us. Good. I mean, he was one of those academic guys that took the fall off <laughs> last fall off, I should say. Yeah. So these I, I, these guys get their contracts written by their agents, and <laughs> take semesters <laughs> off, and I said I need to have one of them. Well, coach, let's jump out. Let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to be hearing from a couple of these returning players. We got Carter Vest and Rashad Lucky in with us here tonight. And I want to invite everybody out to come down to the Belmont Inn. They've got uh, dinner ready for you. And uh, it's going to be a great time here on the Flying Fleet. Gridiron Revival Coaches Show right here on WZLA. Supporter of Erskine College Football. The historic Belmont Inn features updated rooms with beautiful views and every amenity you could imagine. Fleet fans far and wide choose the Belmont Inn as their game week home away from home with great food and drinks, weekly entertainment, and so much more. Call for your reservation today at 864-366-9625. And go Fleet! From the Belmont Inn, Erskine College football is back. Catch all the action at J.W. Babb Stadium in Greenwood, South Carolina. 
Tickets are on sale now at ErskineSports.com. Kids' general admission tickets start at just $5. Tickets and parking passes are available at ErskineSports.com. Get yours today and go fleet. Hey, I'm Matt. And I'm Erin, and we invite you to Two Brews. We're located at 101 Court Square, downtown Abbeville, and we have some new hours for you to come out and enjoy some great new menu items. We're open Monday and Tuesday, 11 to 8 p.m., Wednesday, 11 to 2, and Thursday and Friday, 7 to 2. Come out and try our wings, 12 different flavors, smoked in-house and available every day. Make sure you come in and try our new crow nuts. They are amazing. For carry-out or curbside, give us a call at 366-8999 and watch out for our weekly lunch and dinner specials on Facebook and Instagram. Join the Dode Phillips Club today and know that your investment plays a direct role in transforming the lives of our Flying Fleet football student-athletes. At Erskine, we play football the fleet way, pursuing the remarkable by emphasizing a Christ-centered, highly competitive, community-focused experience. Join the Dode Phillips Club by going to erskine.edu slash football or call 864-379-6502 for more information today. And go fleet! Sports Braid, the best meat and veggies in Greenwood. Served fresh Sunday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And don't forget about their great live entertainment every Friday from 7 until 10. Hey, fleet fans, bring in your ticket on game day and get 10% off your bill. That's right, 10% off your entire bill. That's Sports Break, 114 Cross Creek Connector in Greenwood. A break above the rest for all your games and good times. It's Sports Break. Welcome back to the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show right here on WZLA 92.9 FM and streaming worldwide, WZLARadio.com. We're also on your Alexa devices. Just say Alexa, play WZLA Radio. I'm Benji Greeson, and we are live here at JP's Food and Spirits inside the historic Belmont Inn downtown Abbeville. And uh, we are having a great time here tonight stop on by we've got uh, a little over 30 uh, 35 40 minutes left here in the show and uh, they got dinner specials all kinds of cool stuff for you and uh, you can come by and uh, meet coach chat boyd we got some players uh here tonight as well pictures autograph i'm sure y'all don't mind <laughs> but we've got a uh we've got to rashad lucky in uh with us here uh man how you doing i'm good i'm good 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 glad to have you in on the on the show here uh running back for the flying fleet uh yes, Rashad, let's let's uh let's learn a little bit about you uh where are you originally from uh from greenville south carolina okay uh born and raised what high school did you go to in greenville uh i went to st joseph catholic school okay uh my second two years in high school my gotcha. first two years i went to wayhampton high school okay yeah yeah St. Joe's, uh, you got St. Joe's, and then uh, your your good buddies, Christ Church, almost right across the street yep, there. Rivals, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> rivals, big rivals. Uh, that's really cool. Rashad Lucky uh, in with us, uh, running back for the fleet. Tell us a little bit about uh, your path to get to Erskine. Um, my freshman sophomore year, I really wasn't highly recruited in high school, um, but I didn't get recruited until my senior year. Coach Boyd just walked in, he introduced himself, and he was like, you have an offer. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I was blessed to get that offer last minute and ended up just committing here. Yeah. So, uh, I, I know that, that when you came in, uh, you guys had to deal with uh, with the COVID year and all that, and uh, that had to be kind of, that had to be a bummer, yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know, practicing, hitting each other every day. Right. 34 periods at least. Uh, just practicing. It was hard. Yeah. And then uh, and then word comes out that you'll have a spring season in the spring of 21. Mm -hmm. You can actually uh, get to take the field and have some uh, – you get to hit somebody else, yeah. right? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> What's it been like uh, in, in the whole journey here? I know that uh, – I mean, they, they keep you guys busy, especially when you're here. Take us through what a – what a uh, like a game week here. I mean, this is game week. Take us through what your schedule would look like on a game week for for you know a college football player. Okay. Um, well, Mondays is like normally like cleanup days. 
you know, normally we don't have practice Mondays after our first game, but this week we had practice mm -hmm. on Monday because it's the first game. Um, Tuesdays, we just go through preparation throughout the whole week. Wednesdays, we probably will lift and then have practice after. Mm -hmm. Thursday is another cleanup day. Friday, walk through. Then Saturday is go time. Right. So. Yeah. So they uh, they get you guys up kind of early, feed you, and uh, everybody kind of starts getting ready and training tables and all that kind of stuff, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, a running back, man, at the collegiate level, is there? What's the what's the jump like from high school? You know, there's a lot of dudes that have played high school football. <laughs> there ain't a whole lot of dudes that have played college football. Mm -hmm. What's the what's the jump like from high school to the college game? I tell you, the defense is definitely faster. Yeah, <laughs> definitely faster. They're definitely bigger. So you got to be like. You got to be on your P's and Q's, like yeah. playing a running back. Right. You take a lot of hits, but, I mean, you put trust in your old line, then they'll make it happen for you. And, yeah. I think the amount big. of hits and how quickly those holes close is yeah. probably, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the big jump between mm -hmm. high school and, and college, too. IQ has to increase. Right, right. I mean, you guys, uh, I mean, do you – are there guys on the team that just take it upon themselves? Like, all right, we're gonna watch film. We're gonna we're gonna do this outside of uh, you know the coaches and the meetings and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, most of uh, most of our upper, upperclassmen do it. Yeah, like you'll catch the upperclassmen like studying film together. Uh -huh. you know what I'm saying, getting ready for next week's game, say so, and that's really what it takes. You know what I'm saying, has there been one thing in particular that that was harder for you to adjust to in the college life? Uh, yeah. A lot time <laughs> management. Yeah, time management for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard I've heard that a lot from yeah. a lot of a lot of people. It's uh, you know you, you you've got this amount of time to do something, and if you don't, I mean it's on you, right? Yeah, There's, uh, it's on you. Nobody there holding your hand. Yeah, mom, mom can't be there for you to wake <laughs> you up for class. <laughs> right. So yeah. I miss that though. <laughs> What's the uh, what's your major? Uh, sports management. Okay. Hopefully the minor in business. Okay. My remaining two years. So, uh, any any idea what you want to do after you know with that uh, sports manager? Um, hopefully, I can get to the point where I'm either coaching or you know what I'm saying start my own training facility. Okay. Locally. Yeah. Yeah. This year is uh, it's upon us. I mean, you got your first game. I know you guys really just kind of getting in probably to uh, to Fort Lauderdale there. But uh, what are some uh, what are some goals that you might have for yourself? Uh, coming in, there's your offensive coordinator trying to find his way into the building out there. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> what are some what are some goals maybe you've set for yourself or, or maybe your offense as a whole uh, for this 2022 season? Um, protect the ball, honestly. Uh, less turnovers and score more touchdowns. Yeah, honestly. This has been a uh, wide open. I call it the gas pedal offense because it is just get to the ball, snap it, yes. go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. um, now I know you've got a different offensive coordinator this year. Do you, you think are we going to see some of the same go, go, go uh, type style of offense? Is that just the Erskine way now? Yeah, I think that's just honestly the Erskine way. I don't think we're going to change that at all. Yeah, we, we try to tire the defense out. So. Coach was talking. Coach was talking in the last segment about uh, about uh, trying to be a little more balanced this year. That's, that's probably got to make you smile a little bit. A little more, a few more carries, right? Yeah. <laughs> Take a few more breaths. Right. In between play, <laughs> you get uh, you get tired of pass blocking as yeah. a uh, as a. Well, I mean, you guys do run around. I mean, you, you get some catches or some or yeah. some looks out of the out of the backfield too, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. What's the uh, What's the routine like with, uh, say, you and the uh, in the quarterbacks? Do y'all do like a seven-on-seven seven type uh, or a skelly, as they call it, yeah. uh, drills and stuff? Every day at practice, we do skelly yeah. or we do like a screen period or just like a passing period in right. general. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool, man. Rashad Lucky here. Uh, what number are you wearing this year? 33. Number 33, Rashad Lucky. Be looking for him on the field this season as the fleet uh, will be taking on. University of Fort Lauderdale. That is this coming Saturday. One o'clock is the kickoff. Get your tickets at ErskineSports.com. Man, best of luck moving forward this year, and uh, we'll we'll see you again at some other shows, I'm sure. All right, thank all right, you. absolutely. All right, let's jump out. We'll take a quick break, and uh, we got another guest uh, coming in. We got Carter Vest. We're gonna be hearing from the defense here when we come back right here on the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. Live from J.P.'s Food and Spirits and the historic Belmont Inn, we'll be right back. The Belmont Inn is a proud supporter of Erskine College Football. 
The historic Belmont Inn features updated rooms with beautiful views and every amenity you could imagine. Fleet fans far and wide choose the Belmont Inn as their game week home away from home with great food and drinks, weekly entertainment, and so much more. Call for your reservation today at 864-366-9625. And go Fleet! From the Belmont Inn, Erskine College football is back. Catch all the action at J.W. Babb Stadium in Greenwood, South Carolina. Tickets are on sale now at ErskineSports.com. Kids' general admission tickets start at just $5. Tickets and parking passes are available at ErskineSports.com. Get yours today and go fleet. Hey, I'm Matt. And I'm Erin, and we invite you to Two Brews. We're located at 101 Court Square, downtown Abbeville, and we have some new hours for you to come out and enjoy some great new menu items. We're open Monday and Tuesday, 11 to 8 p.m., Wednesday, 11 to 2, and Thursday and Friday, 7 to 2. Come out and try our wings, 12 different flavors, smoked in-house and available every day. Make sure you come in and try our new crow nuts. They are amazing. For carry-out or curbside, give us a call at 366-8999 and watch out for our weekly lunch and dinner specials on Facebook and Instagram. Join the Dode Phillips Club today and know that your investment plays a direct role in transforming the lives of our Flying Fleet football student-athletes. At Erskine, we play football the fleet way, pursuing the remarkable by emphasizing a Christ-centered, highly competitive, community-focused experience. Join the Dode Phillips Club by going to erskine.edu slash football or call 864-379-6502 for more information today. And go fleet! Sports Braid, the best meat and veggies in Greenwood. Served fresh Sunday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And don't forget about their great live entertainment every Friday from 7 until 10. Hey, fleet fans, bring in your ticket on game day and get 10% off your bill. That's right, 10% off your entire bill. That's Sports Break, 114 Cross Creek Connector in Greenwood. A break above the rest for all your games and good times. It's Sports Break. And welcome back. To the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show right here on WZLA 92.9 FM. You know, we're streaming worldwide, WZLARadio.com. And on your Alexa devices, just say, Alexa, play WZLA Radio. I'm Benji Greeson, and I am now joined with, uh, I'm going to say defensive end slash linebacker. Mostly defensive end. There you go. <laughs> Carter Best in the house with us. And uh, Carter is a... Uh, Upperclassman here for the uh, for the Flying Fleet. Uh, we had him, how many times were you on the show last year? Two, a couple, three, uh, maybe something like that. Something yeah. like that. He's an old pro. I'm just gonna get up and let him carry on the rest of the show <laughs> here. <laughs> oh man, uh, great season last year. 33 tackles, eight tackles for loss, four and a half sacks. Uh, for best, you like to get after the quarterback, huh? Oh yeah, it's best part of football. <laughs> That's exactly right. You guys are uh, you guys are primed. To, trying to put unfair expectations but this defense is primed to have a pretty good year this year oh i agree i mean we got a lot of guys back that are very talented yeah. and i'm excited to see what we can do this year yeah your d-line looks pretty stacked uh front That's seven it. and uh um i mean the whole defense is, is a lot of guys back i think this is the first year and obviously i mean you, you've played like well you played spring season in 21 you played the the fall season in 21 so this is the first full off season mm -hmm spring practice summer practice and in all leading into a uh into a, a regular fall season for you that's had to help out right oh big time yeah. i mean we had guys like me that we never did a college football weightlifting program like a real one that was you know all week long not mixed in with practice right and, i mean that makes a big difference i mean mm -hmm. i felt like in a lot of games we just we weren't there physically right but now that we've had that time to grow physically yeah. I and mean, i think we're prepared to do very well absolutely uh so uh, for people that don't remember from last year tell us a little bit about yourself where are you from originally uh from red high school in powdersville okay. south carolina there you go golden hurricanes right that's right uh, there you go uh tell us about your uh your uh, journey to erskine to be a, a flying fleet uh football player here how'd that come about 
Uh, for me, I was reached out by the uh, old OC, uh, Coach Hayes. Yep. He reached out to me when I was actually uh, preparing to go to the Naval Recruiting Office. Okay. <laughs> I had no other uh, offers, so I was <laughs> like, you know, I was prepared to, to go off into the Navy. And uh, he ended up texting me. I came for a visit, and they, they offered me. And I, I just liked what I saw, the idea of becoming the first class like we have been. And really, what I saw four years ago is what is happening now, where yeah. it's like this group of seniors I came in with, Started with nothing. Now we got the weight room, and we have a, a chance to have a very good year. It's it's exciting to see what you envisioned back in 2018, 2019, coming to life now in 2022. Right. Absolutely. It's game week here, of course. Uh, University of Fort Lauderdale coming into uh, to JW Bab there uh, this coming Saturday. One o'clock is the kickoff, and uh, you get your tickets at uh, ErskineSports.com. So. I know that uh, the the full camp coach said he got a little rowdy the other day. Some guys are just kind of tired of hitting each other, right? Yeah. I mean, you'll have that, though. I mean, yeah. that's football. I right. mean, we're lining up, you know, six whatever days a week, just nailing each other off the line. I mean, you're going to get chippy. But, yeah. you know, we got it back in line. Everyone's good now. Everyone's back to shaking hands. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, you know, you don't want fighting amongst the team, but you you want to see that. I mean, you want to see that fire, right? In, in a way, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't want it happening every practice, yeah. but you want to know some guys got a little dog in them, right? It's absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Has there been any, anybody that come in? I mean, you're like I said, you're you're one of the old men on campus now. Has there been anybody to come in and you're like, okay, this 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 guy's got some uh, got a little juice to him? Anybody that yeah. uh, some new guys we should be looking forward to this year? Yeah, Chris Brown. Uh, he plays Sam Backer. He has been a real standout. And it's okay. actually another CB that plays. Uh, I think they got him right now at stud. He's been a standout as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, too, it, not just the new guys. I mean, older guys have really stepped up and started playing really well. Yeah. Um, even, like, Nolan Holloway, he's yeah. had a great camp. I mean, mm -hmm. just chasing people down. So, just for all over our defense, new and old, yeah, we got guys that are playing great ball right now. Um, leading tackler Brandon Lane graduated. He's gone uh, this year. Uh, who, who's who's stepping into that role? Uh, I like to say Nolan is. You yeah. know, I think me in lesser of a sense only because I play the defensive line. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Brandon Lane, he played will linebacker. Nolan plays middle. You know, that's usually referred to as your quarterback of the defense. Right. And he's got the attitude. I mm -hmm. mean, he – you ever talk to him? He's a great guy. He's a funny guy, but he's got a fire to him. And yeah. He is going to get after you. Hey, that's what you want. You, you want the uh, you, you want those guys at uh, at the at the middle linebacker spot, no doubt about it. So uh, take us through uh, fall camp a little bit here. You uh, they don't take it easy on you, do they? <laughs> <laughs> they don't. Uh, yeah, I mean it was it was rough, but I'll be honest with you, it wasn't as bad as last year. Yeah. Was, these new guys came in, they were complaining, and I told them, man, you don't even know the half of it. Right. So, but uh, it was a good fall camp. I really thought we got a lot better. I mean, you need that the way we have to do it with the condensed schedule. Mm -hmm. You've got to have that going hard for 21 days or whatever it turns out to be. Um, I thought it was really good, uh, and a bunch of the young guys got a chance to show that they could play. Right. Well, you you mentioned earlier this is this was your for, first full like season in the weight room and all that. I know Coach Harrell's the strength conditioning coach there too. Uh, he's also your D line uh, coach. What's the uh, What's the process in that? Does he does he get like everybody comes in at once? Are there are there schedules for you guys to come in and and lift? How's that work? Yeah, so it's like the the way we do it is by a position group. So gotcha. you have like your bigs, which O L D L, mid skill, which your linebackers, kickers, stuff like that, and then your skills, your DBs and wide receivers. They come in, and we're just an hour apart. So it's like you know, lineman first, linebacker second wide receivers last and it just goes like that for yeah. about three hours and you just go and knock it out yeah 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 it's uh it's really neat the science that's behind a lot of that stuff you know the different positions they'll target different mm -hmm. areas in the weight room i know that there's just a there's a routine that everybody does but there are um you know different things for different what's something you guys like specialize in or really keen in on we we for us it's a lot about hip explosion. So yeah. like if you ever come out to our practice, most of our time spent isn't hitting each other. It's spent hitting bags, just trying to get your hips through. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of that too, like clean combo, you know, hang clean stuff like that, and then as well body weight exercises that we do. Are, it's all designed around being more explosive out of your hips because as a right. defensive lineman, that's the main thing you have to worry about. Right, right. Uh, have you got to dig into uh, Fort Lauderdale at all? You know, I've looked at the film. I was watching it today, um, but it's hard to tell who they have. From what I can understand, it seems like a lot of the guys that were there aren't anymore. Okay. Um, 
But now I've seen a little bit of the film. It seems like they run, you know, more of a spread package, which is something I love because I just like I tee know, off and go to the love, QB. Yeah. yeah, you know, I love one on ones. <laughs> I like just showing people what I could do. So you know, right. one on ones is what I go after. But I'm definitely excited to see what they run when they come out on Saturday. Yeah, that's got to be uh, part of the mystery of playing the team right out of the gate, first game yeah. of the season. There's turnover in the roster. They may have been turnover in the coaching staff. You see, I mean, the film from last year, eh, maybe you don't know what you're dealing with, maybe, yeah. right? Yeah, and that, it's weird because it, it flipped on us. You know, for the past couple of years, we were that team of, like, right. no one knows what we're running. We've got the element of surprise. Yeah. But now they know exactly what we're coming out to do. I mean, to it, you know, we got a new OC, so it's a little different. But they know what we're doing, but we don't know what they're doing. Right, right. Man, I just wish you nothing but the best of luck moving forward this season and uh, really primed up to have a great year uh, flying fleet football. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, for, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Carter Best, defensive end, look for him out there on the field, and uh, you'll definitely hear us calling his name uh, this season. All right, let's jump out. We'll take our last break, and when we come back, Coach Boyd will be wrapping it up with us. We'll be previewing uh, Fort Lauderdale and uh, all the cool stuff we got coming up. Actually, we have uh, Coach Drew Ingles is going to be hanging out with us, and then Coach Boyd will be wrapping it up. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show right here on WZLA. The Belmont Inn is a proud supporter of Erskine College football. The historic Belmont Inn features updated rooms with beautiful views and every amenity you could imagine. Fleet fans far and wide choose the Belmont Inn as their game week home away from home with great food and drinks, weekly entertainment, and so much more. Call for your reservation today at 864-366-9625. And go Fleet from the Belmont Inn. Hey, I'm Matt. And I'm Aaron, And we invite you to Two Brews. We're located at 101 Court Square, downtown Abbeville, and we have some new hours for you to come out and enjoy some great new menu items. We're open Monday and Tuesday, 11 to 8 p.m., Wednesday, 11 to 2, and Thursday and Friday, 7 to 2. Come out and try our wings, 12 different flavors, smoked in-house and available every day. Make sure you come in and try our new crow nuts. They are amazing. For carry-out or curbside, give us a call at 366-8999 and watch out for our weekly lunch and dinner specials on Facebook and Instagram. Sports Break, the best meat and veggies in Greenwood. Served fresh Sunday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And don't forget about their great live entertainment every Friday from 7 until 10. Hey, Fleet fans, bring in your ticket on game day and get 10% off your bill. That's right, 10% off your entire bill. That's Sports Break. 114 Cross Creek Connector in Greenwood. A break above the rest for all your games and good times. It's Sports Break. Back here live at the Belmont Inn, JP's Food and Spirits. It is the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. I'm Benji Greeson, and I am joined now by offensive coordinator, Mr. Drew Ingles. How are you, sir? Doing well. Glad to be here. Absolutely. He's another uh, old radio veteran here. Uh, been around uh, the program as long as we've been doing this show. It's always uh, good to catch up with you. So you were offensive line uh, coach uh, and recruiting coordinator last year, right? Yes, sir. And then, uh, and then now you're offensive coordinator. Uh, quarterbacks coach yep. as well what's the uh, what's the transition like there for you personally i know it's all you know in the offense but uh now you got the, the play calling duties on you huh yeah yeah no it's uh you know it's been exciting for me it um you know just blessed that uh you know with the opportunity that coach boyd gave me and um you know get to work we've got a great staff here uh, really enjoy erskine uh, from our coaches to our athletic department all the way up to, to President Adamson, who's the new president. Yeah. Um, you know, they do a great job. It's a great place to be. Um, and just really thankful um, that I get to work every day with those kind of people, with Coach Boyd. So uh, it's been a great, great time for me. I've enjoyed it. Uh, there's some new things. Um, and then there's, you know, at the end of the day, it's just football. So Right. Um, blocking and tackling. Yeah, right. blocking, tackling, executing, and all <laughs> those things. So it's been fun. Um, you know, a little different dynamic being in the quarterback room than it is the O-line room. So, mm -hmm. um, which is there's there's good and bad to it. Uh, maybe maybe not good and bad, maybe just new, you know. Right. So, um, you know, uh, deep down, I'm, a, I'm still an O-lineman at heart. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm not, as I've noticed, I don't uh, I don't probably do as much yelling. And you know what I mean? There's not, it's not as much as physical, uh, which I miss that part of the game. But I also, there's some more... Um, 
I guess you know, technical. Yeah, a little science. bit more technical, that yeah. kind of stuff um, in terms of you maybe you have more influence over the whole offense and whatnot. You reach more. I, I get, I'm, you know, you reach more to the other skill positions now than what you have. You get, right. you get to see the DBs and all those kind of guys. But, um, you know, overall it's been uh, – I've been very blessed to have some people. We've got some phenomenal people in the quarterback room um, in terms of the position and the players in that room. So they've been great to work with. Um, just uh, – Good players, yes, but outstanding human beings. So that's been definitely a great experience so far. So. We uh, we we nicknamed the uh, the offense last year the uh, the gas pedal offense because it was just go go go. You just stepped on the pedal and you know time you're over the ball you snap it. Is that something you guys are going to continue to do? Or are you going to work more of a uh, uh, a tempo per situation type deal? Well, I don't want to give all the secrets. <laughs> you just want my you want my social security number too. You want the first play of the game that we, we're running Saturday. So, but no, there will um, there will definitely be uh, that element in it. Yeah. So that's something we don't want to lose. Uh, right. There, there definitely there's some new things. There's some old things. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're trying to put our players in the best position possible for those guys to go out and make plays. So. You uh, you mentioned your quarterback room. Uh, are, are you ready to name a starter yet? Are you gonna have uh, guy first guy walk out there uh, Saturday? Uh, well, no, I think we're we're still gonna go a couple more days this week. Okay. Uh, one or two more days, and get we've got some, um, you know, we've got a pretty good competition going. So a lot of guys have stepped up. They're making some good plays. Um, you know, definitely we got some returns in the room. We got a couple a uh, couple transfers. So, um, you know, and they've come. We're a year older, which is great. Um, you know, there's some guys who are pretty comfortable with the offense at this point. Um, so we'll just see. There, there's a couple guys that give us some different things. Mm -hmm. um, so. We'll see eventually what one you know we think best fits uh, our team you know if to go out on Saturday. So, right. Um, yeah. You know, probably not yet. Uh, by Saturday we'll have one. Saturday at uh, I don't know, we play at one o'clock. Yeah, about yeah, twelve. We'll, we'll have, yeah, something like that. We'll have one by then. So. <laughs> you uh, it, it's got to be refreshing. Uh, something you just mentioned uh, having people that that kind of know the offense. That's got to be refreshing this year that you actually can talk shop with some of the guys instead of like this is how you're supposed to do you know and and, and people that are familiar with and have been in the system yeah th there's a good base um you know for those guys to go to, to go back on um and yeah. a level of understanding which has been helpful um you know there's still we still got a lot of newcomers so there's still that you know some of those guys are coming along some of the guys know it but uh what you know, as this program continues to progress, mm -hmm. uh, we're relying more and more on that. We actually have some upperclassmen who are, who are really starting to lead, um, which has, you know, it's a it's a huge well, a huge boost for us. Right, so. right. When the players take that role instead of the coaches, special things happen. Right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got more of that. We're year older. You know, the, the off season weight room uh, that was great for us, especially the O line, mm -hmm. uh, you know, D line up front getting better. Just as a program, uh, you know, our guys being able to spend more time around Coach Boyd um, and, and kind of you know evolve with his leadership and where, what he's leading the program in, um, you know, has been certainly a blessing for us. So uh, we're excited about that, excited about what those guys are doing. Um, yeah, it, it is nice to, you know, you're not necessarily explaining things the first time. They've got a little bit of a base to go off of. So, right. um, and, and, you know, just lets them play a little faster and, and know where to go with the football. So we're enjoying that. I know so. you had a couple of linemen that uh, graduated. And yep. uh, you're going to be uh, adding in some more. But it's something else that I – and I mentioned this to Coach Boyd in the first segment – the freshman class seems to be way bigger than the junior class, yes. just from a size wise. Yes, that's something yeah, yeah, yeah. that you guys focused on recruiting, right? Yes, absolutely. So we're, you know, every time we're always trying to get better um, in recruiting. So, um, you know, and the same thing as this program progresses, uh, you know, we've brought in probably better classes each year we've been here. So mm -hmm. um, as we're here longer, we understand what uh, what fits at this place and who can be successful here and the type of guys we need. Um, you know, and and our name and our brand grows as well. Right. Um, you know, it, that has helped in recruiting, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, so, and people are starting to realize that Erskine is, is uh, you know, a great option. We've got a lot of things to sell. We're yeah. a small school. We've got great academics here. We've got a great family feel, especially within our football program. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of opportunities here, not only football athletic opportunities, but uh, opportunities for kids to grow in their faith, um, as well as, you know, Erskine, you get a great degree here, so there's plenty of opportunities that they will leave here with, um, 
you know, to go out and get jobs and be great people once they leave here and, and do things for the Lord and, and, you know, all those things we talk about. That It's not just football. So, right. you know, there's, there's the athletic there's the athletic piece, then there's the academic piece, the social life, all those, the faith part, all those things. And, um, you know, it's all kind of coming together. And as we, you know, we've got guys, some gr- guys graduated last year uh, who, you know, they're out, they're, they've got jobs, they're doing things in the world. And, you know, it's just more people that take you know say this is what Erskine football is about right and um, you know, and it can, we're, we're, it can only grow from no, there absolutely right? and we're proud of the guys we put out because they you know they're we usually like have pretty good people in our program so we're excited yeah. about the things they do um excited about what they're doing it's a you know we got some alumni co- alum coaching now and that kind of stuff so they've we're proud that they're they were with us when they were here and we're proud that they're out there doing things now so and you know once you get that piece of paper that says Erskine College on it Nobody can ever take that from them. No, you know. No, they can't. That's so. a, that's a, uh, this is a point of pride. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. And you got the best logo in sports, maybe. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that I, there, the a lot of people really enjoy that logo. <laughs> I, I, uh, there's a lot of comments people get on that. So, <laughs> it, it is. It is a good logo. Yeah. So. There you go. Mm-hmm. Offensive coordinator Drew Ingles. I'm sure we'll talk to you throughout the year. Uh, man, it's great to see you again. Yeah, yeah. always. Thanks so. for giving me like nothing, but. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, good luck Saturday, and uh, I can't wait to, uh, to see the product you guys put out on the field and uh, let's bring home that dub. Awesome. Sounds good. Appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely. All right, another quick break. We'll uh, come right back. We'll wrap it up with Coach Boyd right here on the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show live from the Belmont Inn at J.P.'s Food and Spirits. We'll be right back. As a proud supporter of Erskine College Football. The historic Belmont Inn features updated rooms with beautiful views and every amenity you could imagine. Fleet fans far and wide choose the Belmont Inn as their game week home away from home with great food and drinks, weekly entertainment, and so much more. Call for your reservation today at 864-366-9625. And go Fleet from the Belmont Inn. Hey, I'm Matt. And I'm Aaron, And we invite you to Two Brews. We're located at 101 Court Square, downtown Abbeville, and we have some new hours for you to come out and enjoy some great new menu items. We're open Monday and Tuesday, 11 to 8 p.m., Wednesday, 11 to 2, and Thursday and Friday, 7 to 2. Come out and try our wings, 12 different flavors, smoked in-house and available every day. Make sure you come in and try our new crow nuts. They are amazing. For carry-out or curbside, give us a call at 366-8999 and watch out for our weekly lunch and dinner specials on Facebook and Instagram. Sports Break, the best meat and veggies in Greenwood. Served fresh Sunday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And don't forget about their great live entertainment every Friday from 7 until 10. Hey, Fleet fans, bring in your ticket on game day and get 10% off your bill. That's right, 10% off your entire bill. That's Sports Break. 114 Cross Creek Connector in Greenwood. A break above the rest. For all your games and good times, it's Sports Break. And welcome back to the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show. It's going to be a Right here at the <laughs> Belmont Inn. Last segment of the show here. Just a few more minutes, and uh, we will uh, close the book on our first coaches show of this uh, 2022 season. I'm Benji Greason here, joined once again with the head coach, Coach Shap Boyd. Uh, coach, got to talk to uh, Carter Vest earlier, talked to Rashad Lucky, uh, uh, offensive coordinator Drew Ingles, and uh, – well, it's game week, and that's uh, it seems like everybody that we've spoken to is just really excited to get through camp, to get into game week preparation, and I'm sure not only the players, the coaches are ready as well. Yeah, I think that's just – that's a it's a ritual. It's a rite of passage. I mean, just trying to move your new – because I mean, everything's new in the sense that you're, you're, you've developed a new, um, you know, what's the – chemistry, I right. guess. Because yeah. your chemistry changes every year. You, you lose kids, you add kids, and, and then you, you get a mixing potion and you, you kind of stir it up and you kind of go through those three weeks of camp, whatever it is, and then you kind of get ready to play. Yeah. And then you find out a lot about what you were mixing right? typically in those first few weeks. So that's kind of where we are and that's what we're looking forward to, and I think everyone's excited for it. I mean, Carter kind of hit it on the head. I mean, we've been progressing. I think we've been building. Um, 
there's no doubt in my mind we're, we're a better football team than we were last year. Yeah. Now, how that shows up, I don't necessarily know how that how that shows up. I just, you know. Yeah. But I know this: we're going to compete. Um, we'll do that for sure. Yeah. So. Well, that's been a theme of uh, you know, no matter what the scoreboard showed uh, over the last two years, there's there hasn't been quit. No. And, yeah. and that's the big that's the big thing that I've asked of them, and I think they've tried to deliver that. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. So the opening game, home opener, this Saturday, uh, September third, one o'clock is the kickoff. There, University of Fort Lauderdale comes in to JW Babb Stadium there in Greenwood. It's faculty and staff appreciation day, and then uh, the following Saturday, one thirty at Clark Atlanta. Actually, that's at uh, four four o'clock. Oh, they changed the time. Okay, yeah. four o'clock on the kickoff. You got a lot of four o'clock games this this year at home. Well, all of our four, all of our games are home. The only reason Fort Lauderdale is not at four is because they got a long road to go right, to right. get back home. So, mm -hmm. just trying to help them out a little bit. But four o'clock is kind of the time we settled on to try and be out of the heat of the day. Right. You know, and and it's kind of a dusk game, whatever you want to call. It. I don't know if that's a good decision, but it was one we made back at the beginning, and I'm okay with. The, I'd rather play at four than play at seven or eight, to be honest with you, oh, just yeah, because yeah. you know the late games. Your turnaround the next – your work day as a coach the next day is – it doesn't matter when you stop the day before. <laughs> right. Because your work day starts whenever it starts. Exactly so, uh, right. Uh, something new this year being a part of the uh, South Atlantic Conference is uh, Flow Sports will be carrying uh, the stream of all the games. And uh, that will be the video feed. You can go to theflowsports.com uh, and, uh, and watch the games there. Just go to erskinsports.com. You can find all the info. Uh, for all the games there of course you can listen to them right here at wzla but i encourage you to come out and uh and see a game it is a fun fun atmosphere uh and uh and erskine does such a great job to uh enhance the fan experience at each game so erskinesports.com has your tickets parking passes and uh everything all the information you need for your game day experience there with the flying fleet all right coach uh a couple keys to a victory coming up here saturday well we just need to settle down and play our game we don't need to let the it, it's not what the other team's doing it's what right. we do i mean and, and, and that's the, the the biggest thing i think that, that we have found out because in most cases even when we're playing some of the good teams we've played you know if if we're shooting ourselves on the foot that's not a good thing if we're not then we do some good things and and, and we're not you know that far removed I mean, yeah. not that we are that level or that caliber yet but we're certainly not what we were when we started. So we're definitely going in the right direction. And we just need – if we can eliminate the MAs, the missed assignments, and, and play what we're trying – or try and execute what, we're, what we want to execute, we're going to be okay. If we let, um, you know, if we let miscues or we create miscues or self-inflict mis miscues, then that's going to be problematic. But that's problematic for any football team in the country. Absolutely right. All right, Coach, thanks so much for your time, and uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this uh, opening uh, uh, show here, the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival, next Monday night, 7 o'clock. We'll be live at Two Brews here on the square in Abbeville. Come by, have dinner there, and uh, get to meet uh, coaches and players, and we'll be doing this every Monday night, 7 o'clock, as uh, we uh, make our way through this 2022 season. Mm -hmm. Coach Boy, best of luck uh, Saturday, and uh, we'll, we'll see you there. I appreciate it, Benji. Thank you. All right. All right. That's all the time we've got. Uh, we are going to take it back to the studios here. And thanks for tuning in to the Flying Fleet Gridiron Revival Coaches Show.